Hello! Today I will be showing you how to download, install, and use the Classic Explorer program that I created. This program allows you to read all the contents of any level save file from pre-classic or classic Minecraft. That means it works from RD132211, the earliest version that has been released, to classic 0.30. It uses a generic deserializer to accomplish this so that it can even work on save files from versions that are now missing. The best existing solutions were difficult to use and were flawed, which is why I decided to create this simple MBT Explorer-like program to solve the problem. I'll now give a tutorial on how you can use the program yourself. The first step to run Classic Explorer is making sure your computer has Java. If you already have Java, you can skip this step. To check if you have Java on Windows, you can go to your folder, this PC, the C drive, and then the program files folder. If you have Java, there will be a folder in here called Java. This PC doesn't have Java, so I'm going to show you how to install it. Classic Explorer only needs Java 8 to run. Any version after that should work, but I'll show uh, Java 17, because as I'm recording, this is the most recent long-term support version of Java. I have the link to this website in the description. So I've gone to Windows tab because I'm on Windows. There's also Linux and Mac. And I'm going to click on the 64 installer. It's going to download the installer file. Once that's downloaded, you can click on it to start it up. You do want to allow this to make changes from Oracle. All right, here's the installer. I'm going to click next, next, wait for it to install. And then here we go, it's been successfully installed. So now if you go to the program files, here's the Java folder, and inside it you can see it says 17. You can also check on the command prompt. If you go here, if you run Java dash version, it should say 17, Java version 17. Now that you have Java installed on your computer, the next step is to go to the Classic Explorer GitHub download page in the description. As I'm recording, the most recent release is just version 1.0, but you'll want whatever is the latest release when you're watching this video. You want the jar file, which is already compiled for you. You don't want the source code. And once it downloads, you can open the folder it's at. And I would recommend making a separate folder for it before you run it because it will create a settings file wherever you put it. So I will put this in here. And then to run it, all you need to do is double click. And here you go, you're now running the Classic Explorer program. Now I'm going to show you how to use the Classic Explorer program. It's pretty simple. If you go to the file, you can select open file and then navigate to the file you want to read. It should end with .dat or .mine. Often it's level.dat. I have this example file right here. So you select open, just takes a second to read, and then you can go through, and here's all the fields that are stored inside that file. It displays all the information, and classes and arrays have folder icons. So you can expand them and see what's inside or collapse them. You can also do that with the arrow buttons. You can press the right arrow to expand, left arrow to collapse. Now I'm going to show you all the settings in the Classic Explorer program. The Settings tab is right next to the File tab. And if you click it, you can see all the options right here. The first setting is Dark Mode, Self-Explanatory. I'll leave that on. The next one is to Convert Unix Timestamp to Date. This only applies to the Create Time field in the Level class. And by default, I'm giving you the full Unix timestamp, which is how it's stored in the file. But if you want to go ahead and convert this into a time that is like human readable, you can select this option and it will do that for you. So you can see this world was actually created 2022, December 19th in your time zone. You get the exact time as well. Next, there's two settings that allow you to show even more information that I normally have just removed. The first one is the show the full class name. So if I select this, you see these classes now show the full package that they're stored in. This information is stored in the file, so I wanted a way to display it. 
but usually it's not very uh, useful. So you can see the full name is com.mojang.minecraft.character.zombie, but if I unselect this option, it's going to remove that first part. It's just going to tell you it's a zombie. Finally, there's a serial version UID, which is used for classes. Um, it's a technical thing, but I wanted a way to display it as well. Finally, there's zoom options. So you can zoom in or zoom out. Uh, you can also use control plus and minus on your keyboard to do these. It just changes the font size. All these settings are stored in the settings.txt file so that um, they will be saved even if you close out of the program. The final tab at the top is about. If you select this, it'll give you information about the program and contact information for me. That's all there is for this tutorial. You should be able to read your classic files now. Thank you for watching.